we doing? Dr. Diem here at Hazleton Eye Specialists on uh, the Airport Beltway in Hazleton. We're at 281 Airport Road here, Hazel Township, PA 18201. Telephone number 570-453-2020. And we have our beautiful new location in Tannersville, uh, right on Route 611 behind Friendly's. Uh, check us out there as well, 570-421-3342. Very special show today. I'm joined by my colleague and good friend, Dr. Patel, uh, our retina specialist here at Hazleton Eye Specialist. And we are very lucky uh, here in the Hazleton area to have a retinal specialist uh, take a trip down to see us uh, once a week. We're very lucky. So first of all, thank you for taking the time to come down and and take care of all of our wonderful patients. So thank you. Uh, you're welcome, thank you. And uh, so, you know, patients see you here, we refer them to you and, and we co-manage them. I wanted to just take the opportunity for patients to kind of get to know you a little bit, and know who you are, where you're from, a little bit about yourself, um, and, and uh, maybe be even a little more comfortable with, with seeing you. So um, where are you from originally? Where were you born and raised? So I, I was born in Patterson, New Jersey, but I moved to Scranton when I was one year old. I didn't know that. I didn't, actually didn't know you were born in New Jersey. Okay, a lot, lot of people here from New Jersey, but you were really raised in, in Scranton. Scranton. Yeah, yep. um, so raised in Scranton, you went to Scranton Elementary School? or, or? We have an elementary school. <laughs> That's <laughs> good. So, so I went to Scranton <laughs> Elementary School. Where'd you go to high school? I went to Valley View, and then after that I went to uh, Scranton Prep. Scranton Prep. Okay, good. So lots of people know about those schools. So really raised in the Scranton area, product of Northeastern Pennsylvania. And at some point in time, you decided you'd go on to uh, postgraduate education. Correct. You went to medical school. Yep. And um, where did the passion for eyes come about? Oh, Is that's that a, that's that a loaded question. I I started initially wanting to go into um, something that dealt with both having a medical field and a surgical field. Okay. And I was looking at different options, and initially I was looking at interventional neuroradiology. That's a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> so then my uh, other cousin, who works in the Tannersville office, was like, "You have to check out uh, what retinal surgery is about." Okay. So one look and I was sold. And so it, it was and something you knew immediately you wanted to, to do. do it, yep, and it was him that actually trained me. Uh, is that right? That's yeah. fantastic. So, you know, for, for our viewers out there, you know, I think it could sometimes be a little confusing. There's all sorts of different flavors of eye doctors, I like to say. So we have different flavors of eye doctors. We have Dr. Kislin, myself, Dr. DeBello, Dr. Olzinski, Dr. Bellinger. We're all optometrists. Um, we've gone to four years of undergraduate school. We've done four years of optometry school um, where we learn basically everything there is to know about the eye. And um, you know, I like to say we're the primary eye care provider. So you have a problem, you come in, we can diagnose it, often treat it, and then if we need to, we can triage and send to a more specialized eye surgeon, which is what you are. Correct. And so there's different types of eye surgeons, right? So what, what do you deal with? I deal with more at the back of the eye, the retina. The retina, okay. So we deal with diseases that affect um, your vision that are sight threatening, such as retinal detachments, macular degeneration, um, vascular occlusions, diabetic retinopathy. Some pretty serious things. Yes. And so, you know, when we're when when we get to you, often we're dealing with conditions that affect the way that you're able to function, the way you're able to see reading, the way you're able to drive, the way you're able to see your friends and family. So you're dealing with seeing and not seeing in Correct. many cases. Driving, so, not driving. Yeah. Yep. And so that could be a, a heavy uh, thing to deal with. And a lot of times patients have a lot of questions for you and, and uh, are, are not really understanding why they're there. So, um, so is that like something you enjoy too? You know, all the, the sort of um, um, patient care that goes along with the we, surgery? So. Yes, I enjoy every aspect of it. The best is working as a team, how you guys have already explained to them before they've gotten to me. They already know what's going on yeah. most of the time. Fantastic, w wonderful. So so you're, um, tell me a little bit about yourself. You, Where do you live now? Where do you hail from now? Still in the Scranton area. You're still in the Scranton area. Yeah. You yep. see a left. The apple didn't fall too far from that. That's trip. fantastic. Yeah. That's really good. So you're born and raised in the northeastern Pennsylvania re region, and, and you still live in the Pennsylvania region. Yep. Fantastic. And you do have an office in northeastern Pennsylvania, your own office, correct? Yes, That's, I do. Where is that located? Uh, it's in Clark Summit. In Clark. So you have a standalone office in Clark Summit, um, and you do surgery at, where? At 
Geisinger CMC. So you'll do retinal surgeries at Geisinger CMC, CMC yep. there. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. And um, you, you have a family? I do, yep. A uh, wife, I have a wife and, and two kids. Yep. Wonderful, wonderful. Yep, How old are the kids? Six and eight. Six and eight. So he's a father, a surgeon. And the other thing I know that you, you enjoy doing is skiing. Yes, that's correct. Big skier, right? Yep. So, uh, I've, people, I've asked you to come with me many times. I haven't, I we know. haven't gone together yet. Though, yep. We're going to get out and yeah. ski. It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I, I think it's, it's interesting. Um, you know, patients come in and you're saving their eyes, saving their vision, and, and you're often dealing with, um, you know, very serious things but it's nice to get to know the other side of you um, and, and know that you're a human and you have interests and, and things as well. So um, what's your favorite uh, food? What do you like to eat? <laughs> wow, that's a good question. Anything? Um, I would have to say pizza. You're a pizza fan. Yeah. All right, that's pretty simple. Yeah. Um, and, Quick, uh, easy, you don't have to think about it. What's your favorite place to ski? If you had the choice and you wanted to go ski somewhere, where are you going to go? Best place that you've ever been. A lot of people that ski in our area, so. I don't know how to answer that question. It's probably somewhere out in Norway. Norway? Yeah. Really? Well, I bet yeah. you there's some great skiing out there. Fantastic. Yeah. Wonderful. So um, we're, we're here getting to know Dr. Patel a little bit better. Um, after the break, we're going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, one of the conditions that macular or that uh, Dr. Patel treats on a daily basis, and that's macular degeneration. It's a condition that affects people throughout our area and uh, something that we want you to know a little bit more about. So when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about macular degeneration. Hey guys, welcome back and we are very excited here. We're at Hazleton Eye Specialist, 281 Airport Road, Hazel Township, Pennsylvania. Uh, telephone number 570-453-2020. And we also have a beautiful office there in Tannersville, Stroudsburg Eye Specialist on Route 611, right off the uh, interstate by the Crossings Outlets, right behind Friendly's Office 611. And the telephone number there is 570-421-3. 342. Give us a call. Schedule your appointment today. We're here with Dr. Sashin Patel, who is a local native of northeastern Pennsylvania, born and raised here in northeastern Pennsylvania, lives in northeastern Pennsylvania to this day, and uh, very, very happy to have him coming to Hazleton to see all of our patients to satisfy all of our retinal needs. A retinal surgeon, which is we don't have any in Hazleton. There are no retinal surgeons in Hazleton. So um, to have a retinal surgeon, um, you know, coming here once a week is a very big deal. Um, and we're very happy to have you here. Um, so last uh, segment, we uh, learned a little bit about you and what you like to do. We know you're an avid skier, you like pizza, and um, we uh, wanted to talk a little bit about macular degeneration because this is something that you see every day, day in and day out. So first of all, what percentage of patients do you see that have macular degeneration? That I see. That you see on a daily basis. Maybe seven out of 10 or six out of 10. So this is primarily what you're doing on a daily basis. Correct. Okay, so I want for my patients out there, for all the viewers to, to know, because a lot of people, they, they hear about macular degeneration. They, the people will say, I have the immaculate degeneration, <laughs> right? They, they say all sorts of funny things because they hear these words and they're not quite sure exactly what it is. So macular degeneration. Can you give me a little bit of what that is? What is macular degeneration? It's a degenerative disease that affects the central vision, the part of the eye that you use to read and to do fine detailed work. So when you're looking at something, you're using your macula to see that. Correct. And that's the center part of what you're looking at. And the macula, so the macula isn't responsible for what's on the side, only in the center. Correct. Okay. And so when you say degeneration, does it get better? Does it continue to get worse? What, what do you mean by that? So there's two types. There's a dry type and a wet type. Okay. The dry type slowly gets worse over years and it progresses very slowly for the most part. Okay. Uh, the wet type can suddenly decrease your vision at once and uh, out of nowhere out of nowhere but that there are forms of the wet type that go slow also okay and there are forms of the dry form which progress very quickly but in general 
the dry form goes very slowly over many years and the wet type takes your vision away a little bit faster. No, I, I usually tell my patients, the patients that I see primarily of dry macular degeneration. And I, I say this statistic, I'm not really sure, you know, if it's completely accurate. Out of all the people, I remember it from, from somewhere, out of all the people that have macular degeneration, probably 70% have dry macular degeneration. Would you say that's an accurate assessment? Probably closer to 90%. 90%. Yeah. So 90% out of all 90. the macular degenerations are dry. Correct. And out of that 90%, probably a large percent of those people don't even know they have macular degeneration. Correct. Is that correct? Very correct. So how does one, because it's actually very important to determine whether somebody has dry macular degeneration to treat them, we're gonna talk about how we do that, so that they don't end up with wet macular degeneration. Is that correct? Yep, if we catch it early and we start the vitamins, we could delay the progression of the so disease. So what's important to get somebody to get to the point where they understand if they have macular degeneration? What's important? Maybe we should talk about the risk factors for macular degeneration. So what would be some of the risk factors that you think our, our listeners should know about to, to say, hey, if you have these risk factors, you should get in for an eye exam. Smokers in general, people with a family history. So if you smoke, quit. But if you smoke and you're not quitting, um, <laughs> you should come in and get an eye exam because that increases your risk of macular degeneration by how many times, approximately? I've heard 20 times. You think that's accurate? I don't know if there's a way of uh, quantifying it, okay. but it significantly does increase I'm gonna it. I'm going to say 20 times. I like that the, number. The people who end up having worse macular disease and the more severe cases are usually the heavier smokers. Okay, so smokers, high risk, what else? Yeah. Uh, family history. So if you have a grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, cousin, brother, sister that has macular degeneration, it confers upon you in hi a higher risk, is that correct? Right. Now why is that? Because there's a genetic compon component to it that runs in families. So because this is something in our genetic makeup, it could turn on in, in us because it was given to us. Correct. Okay, so if we have a family history, smokers or family history, what Those else? are the two most important. Those are the two most important. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, people who have a Western diet are, seem to have more of a propensity to get. Western diet, what yeah. do you mean by that? People that eat green leafy vegetables, mm -hmm. things that were uh, high in omega-3s seems to protect against. It protects. Yep. And then so the opposite of that, it would be cheeseburgers and pizza? Yeah, pretty, <laughs> pretty, much, pretty much. And that could confer a higher risk, right? Yeah, not, yeah. not having a healthy lifestyle. Uh, what about being white or having Caucasian descendant? More likely to get it, but all nationalities, all skin pigments do get it, but certain ones get it, they seem to get it later in life. Interesting. If, if you have a darker skin complexion. Okay, what about um, male, female? Is there any difference there? No, I think it's pretty about equal. the same. Yeah, about okay. the same. All right. So, um, so the big things that we want to um, let people know about: if you have a family history, you need to have an eye exam, and it needs to be an eye exam that that really thoroughly evaluates the back of the eye. So, here at Hazelton Eye Specialist, myself, Dr. Kislin, Dr. DeBello, Dr. Bellinger, Dr. Olzinski, really do a wonderful job, very thoroughly evaluating the back of the eye. We also have some other great technologies that um, many places do not have that allow us to, to, in fact, no one else in the area has, to be able to evaluate the risk of macular degeneration. So you're aware of dark adaptation, which has been shown to be one of the earliest signs of macular degeneration risk. So we have that. It's a special device that allows us to determine whether or not you have a high risk of macular degeneration. And another machine we have is something called an electroretinogram, another test that, that allows for us to determine whether or not your risk of macular degeneration is slightly higher. So um, if, if you've been told that your um, aunt, uncle, cousin, grandmother um, has macular degeneration, you're not sure if you do, uh, we should really get you in to check that out so that you don't end up seeing him later on down the road. So if you do not, if you come in and we say, you know, there is a risk for macular degeneration, why, why is it important to, to do that? Is there something we could do now to reduce your risk later? We can start modifying those things that cause it. We could try to stop smoking. Stop smoking. We could start taking the vitamin. What is the vitamin? It's a, they call it the AREDS multivitamin. And what does AREDS st stand for? 
age-related eye disease study. And, and this study, very important, showed that a very specific mixture of vitamins reduces the risk of going from dry macular degeneration, the type of macular degeneration that 90% of people have, most don't even know they have it, and it often precedes the very dangerous and sight-threatening wet macular degeneration. So we want to determine if you have that treat it with this very specific supplementation that'll reduce your risk from going from dry to wet by 20%, which is excellent. Um, so we're here today with uh, Dr. Patel, a retinal surgeon uh, who comes to our Hazleton office uh, every week. We're very lucky to have him. And uh, on the other side of this break, we're gonna be talking about a diabetic eye disease and the things that we do um, to evaluate it and treat it and uh, why it's so important for Dr. Patel. Thank you. Here again, we're in Hazel we're at Hazelton Eye Specialist here on the Airport Beltway. I'm here with my good friend and colleague, Dr. Patel, a retina specialist who uh, thinks so highly of us here in Hazelton that he spends a day a week treating the lovely uh, patients of of the Hazelton area, and we're so grateful that he does. Again, we're on the Airport Beltway, 281 Airport Road, Hazel Township, Pennsylvania, 570-453-2020. We also have a beautiful beautiful brand new office in Tannersville, right off the exit of Interstate 80 near the Tannersville outlets, uh, right behind Friendly's on Route 611. Telephone number there is 570-421-3342. Check out our brand new office there in Tannersville. So again, very, very uh, happy and lucky to be here with my good friend, Dr. Patel. Um, at the beginning of the, the segment, we were talking about um, uh, a little bit about Dr. Patel and the things he enjoys he's doing. We know he's an avid skier and he enjoys pizza. Uh, we, uh, after the break, uh, found out a little bit more about macular degeneration. This is the condition that Dr. Patel treats most often. Um, and now we're going to talk a little bit about diabetic eye disease. Um, so is diabetic eye disease something you do uh, see a lot in your, your uh, it's, care? It's actually extremely common. So. Um, Tell me a little bit about uh, what happens to the eye with increased um, blood sugar. So somebody's blood sugar is high. Why does that affect the eye? So in general, it affects every part of the body. Wow. Anywhere you have blood vessels, okay. they react to the increased blood sugar. And over are there time, lots of blood vessels in the eye? There are plenty of them. Okay. Now these blood vessels over time, in reaction to having the blo high blood sugars for many, many years, they start to shut down, they okay. close off, and new blood vessels start to form. These new blood vessels, are, they leak fluid and they, they bleed, so they, they cause loss of vision through two mechanisms. Wow, and I've actually been told, and I believe there's research to show this, that um, diabetic eye disease is one of the leading causes of blindness in working-aged individuals throughout the United States. Once they get to you, a lot of these individuals are suffering from loss of vision. Yes, correct. So a lot of our patients have diabetes. There could be genetic components, there could be um, diet and exercise components, lifestyle components. How do we stop the patients from getting to you? Diet, exercise, control your blood sugars as well as you can. It's that easy. It's, it's easier said than done, though. But it's easier said than done. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. So yeah. what are some things that we can do to help our patients get there? What would you recommend? I mean, it's, it's tough. I mean, what, what do we do to get your lifestyle back on track? Is there anything that you like to recommend or help that you like to give to your patients to get them better? I, t I try to tell them to get in at least a 30-minute brisk walk every day or some form of exercise. Okay. Try to watch what they're eating, watch their diets, eat more green leafy vegetables, eat less uh, sugars, rice. I think a lot of times people forget that. They think, okay, well, I'm not eating cupcakes. Yeah. I'm not eating cookies. I'm not having candy. Everything's cool. Yet, we have a lot of Italians in our area, but they're eating a whole plate of pasta every night. Not good. Right? So too people, much of any one thing is probably not good. A good balanced diet is what probably helps the most. Okay. All right. Uh, so a balanced diet. Anything else? So the other thing is to monitor your eyes, depending on what stage of retinopathy you're at. So would you say uh, if you have diabetes, 
and you've been diagnosed, or even if you're pre-diabetes and your, your primary care doctor, endocrinologist, PA, nurse practitioner, whatever, is monitoring you for diabetes, you should get an eye exam. For sure. Okay, so you heard it here first. If you have diabetes, you have pre-diabetes, any discussion of diabetes whatsoever, it is going to do you good to come in, get an eye exam, and find out where your baseline is. Make sure nothing is going wrong. Very often, Dr. Kislin, myself, Dr. DeBello, Dr. Olzinski, Dr. Bellinger, and one of our two offices will see a patient and they didn't even know they had diabetes, and we look in the back of the eye as part of our very thorough eye exam here I think we do one of the most thorough eye exams in the area um, look at the back of the eye and we will see hemorrhages blood spots in the back of the eye the patient has no idea they have diabetes we send them for an exam and they find out they have diabetes so oftentimes we're one of the first ones to diagnose it um, so so if you have diabetes we need to get you in here so there's some early stages of diabetes that we'll see that often just uh, lifestyle management like you said will get them better but in the more advanced forms, there's some more advanced treatments that need to be done. And at that point, vision loss is, is sometimes inevitable. So what kind of treatments are you doing once they get to you, once we've seen them and said, this is something that requires further intervention beyond just getting the blood sugar under control, what are we doing to treat the eyes at that point? So it boils down to two major treatments, injections and lasers injections and lasers. And I'll be very honest with you, Dr. Patel, when somebody comes in and they're in the earlier stages, I tell every single one of them that getting your blood sugar under control now, eating right, listening to your doctor, exercising is going to save you from getting injections into your eye or lasers being shot into the back of your eye. And I joke around about that, um, but I say it very seriously to patients, not to spook them and scare them, but to understand that there's very serious ramifications to your vision and, and diabetes. And I think that most people, when we get that uh, communication to them, believe that this is something they need to make a change about. So the lasers and the injections. Can you walk me through that a little bit? Is How do we do that? So if they're gonna be getting injections, it's usually once a month in the beginning. And most of the time, we try to extend it out after a series of three or five of them. Sometimes we're unable to, other times we're able to extend it out to close to three months, but we go in two week intervals. Okay. Um, Every now and then, if the patient's condition isn't too advanced, we're able to even stop the injections. Oh, wow. And this is for diabetic macular edema. Okay. So, um, one big question we get, and I know that you also do injections for, for macular degeneration. We didn't talk about that, but that's the main treatment for macular degeneration. So, let's just talk two seconds about injections. So, first thing that people should know about injections, does it hurt? We try to do it so it doesn't hurt. We numb your eye up so you barely feel it. However, that being said, every now and then somebody does feel it, but we take extra precaution the next time to make sure they don't by doing a, a numbing injection before they actually get the shot. 99.99999% of patients that I see that you've seen have literally no discomfort whatsoever. They don't even know that it happened. Very little visual consequences, very little blurriness, very little discomfort, very little redness. Um, one thing that I see that's very common is there's often a very localized red spot near the injection site. Why does that happen? That's going through the uh, blood vessels over the sclera in the conjunctiva that bleed a little bit. Kind of like a through. bruise on the eye, is that a good way to explain it? Yeah, and, and it's, it's painless, and, and, it's and it goes away. So it's not sight threatening nope, or not nothing anybody needs to worry about. So overall, injections are a really good thing that we have, right? Yes, it is. It's changed the way we care for patients. Yep. And saved a lot of people's vision, right? Correct. So nothing to be afraid of. Uh, with, with injections and, and the treatment of macular degeneration and diabetic eye disease. We are extremely lucky to have Dr. Patel, a retinal surgeon, coming to Hazleton once a week as part of our team here at Hazleton Eye Specialists. Um, if, if any of you have a family history of macular degeneration, uh, are, are diagnosed with diabetes or pre-diabetes, these are reasons that we need to get you into the office, have a thorough eye exam immediately, so that you don't need to end up with Dr. 
Patel. He's a great guy, but really, um, we would rather you just see us instead of him because at that point, there's probably the need for an injection or laser into the back of the eye. And thank God he's here to provide that care for, for all of us here at Hazleton Eye Specialist. Thanks for joining us on oh, another uh, Hazleton Eye Specialist Eye Care Today. Dr. Patel, thanks for everything you do. Oh, thank you. And we'll catch you on the next episode of Eye Care Today.